nine rolls of a Christian wife. It's more than nine, but I'm only going to do nine because I'm going to put them all um, in a book. Okay, so I'm only going to do nine. I think this is the last one I'm going to do. No, no, no. The last one I'm going to do is I'm going to do ten. This, there's more, but I'm going to just, I'm going to do submit the last one. Okay, nine rules of a Christian wife. Number one, do not marry a man. Single ladies, that's dating for marriage. Welcome back to Church Girls Want to Get Married too. My name is Janice. There are all different types of men out here. You need to choose one. Choose the best one for you. Choose the one that's going to give you a good and fulfilling and happy and lasting marriage, okay? Number one, do not marry a man you do not respect. Ladies, respect is the air the man breathes. So if you don't respect him, please don't marry him. Number two, do not marry a man you do not admire. Use Barack Obama all the time. I admire that man. There are other men. I admire my husband. I admire him. Number three, do not marry a man you do not trust. I use the $2.50 as your bank account. You're living paycheck to paycheck and you don't trust him with your bank card with $2.50. But girl, you're going to marry him and turn your life over to him? Makes absolutely no sense. Number four, do not marry a man you do not need. This is where a lot of women, especially women of color, get in trouble. We lead with our degrees and our jobs and we come off as we don't need the men. And how many of you ladies know that men needs to feel needed girl you need to feel need i tell big michael i need you my my honey i need you to go get the mail for me mike mike could you could you open this lotion i just can't they need to feel needed girl even if you don't need them remember that movie um where Will Smith was the was the 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 hero. Oh, what's that movie? Oh my God, it's on the top of my tongue. Ha ha Hanok 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 Hong something like that. And remember, he came back because there was the girl who is just like him, and nobody knew that this girl was just like Hancock, right? Was it Hancock? Something like that. And. She is strong. And even though she was strong and she could open the jars, she would always ask her husband, Honey, could you open this jar of pickles for me? I never forgot that. Okay. So even though she can do it, she was asking him to do it. It's not that you can't do it for yourselves, lady. It's just that for your husband, you need to make him feel. My husband, we're running down the stairs to do anything. For, if I call him right now. Girl, one time the internet, the thing went out. I called, I sat right here. I mean, he was upstairs in the bed. I called him. He came down here. And fix it. He's right there. All I do is get up and turn it on. Uh-uh. I need you to do it for me, Michael. Okay. <laughs> I call those the foundational, the four cornerstones, okay? Because everything, the other ones rest on respect, admire, trust, and need. The next one is rest. Do not marry a man that you can't rest in. <coughs> Amen. Christ's purpose was to come so that the church could rest. I feel a shout. Ha! Ah! His purpose for the church is so that she could rest. I'm not going to preach this morning, girl, because I got a lot of videos to make today because I got to finish working on this book. Number five, number six, enjoy. Child, struggling is under the curse. Why you marry a man that can't, you can't enjoy your life? We are modest over here. The church girls want to get married too, okay? We don't try to live like the Joneses, try to keep up with the Joneses when the other important stuff like your emergency fund, your savings, your retirement, your children's college fund is not okay, but you up here spending $13,000 on a purse. Why? $1,200 shoes. Please tell me why. When you could go on up to Marshall's and get the same shoes for $69.99. Please tell me why. Huh? Tell me why you need to be driving around in a Benz and you live in the hood that you got to sleep with your head stuck out the window so the people don't steal your car. Why not get you a more family-friendly car and move your, use that six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month that you're paying for the car. Move your kids into a better neighborhood so they can go to better schools. 
Okay, so over here at the church, girls want to get married to the full Baptist church, church of God in Christ, holiness, full gospel, faith of Christ, sounds of praise. Should we are, do we live like with the Bible say in modesty? We don't overspend. We don't spend unnecessary money. We don't overeat. We just don't overdo stuff over here. We do things decently and in order. Okay, yes. Birthdays, Christmas, Thanksgiving. I'm not talking about those, girls. Child, please. Mm -mm, birthdays, I go all the way out. Okay, I eat like a pig. Christmas, girl, I was so laid out. Like, oh, child, help. Cook me now. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about in your daily life, okay? Don't marry him if he's not going to afford you a good and comfortable life. We're not talking about you living like Beyonce and them. We don't have Beyonce and them money. I'm talking about comfort. You're comfortable. Okay. Do you have to drive a Benz to be comfortable? Or do you need to go get a Ford that is more affordable? And you can move your kids into a better neighborhood and go to better schools and give up the Benz payment every month. Do you see what I mean? Do not marry a man you cannot praise. Ladies, your purpose is to praise him. A wife is representatives of the church. What does the church do? What do we spend our lives doing? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was up from three o'clock this morning walking through my house. I had on Cindy Trim. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise that God. I bless you. We just celebrate. Christmas, okay? I, I said you celebrate his birth every day. You don't have to wait for one year, one day a year, but every day I get up, thank you, Jesus. It is the same way. Your purpose, ladies, is to praise your husband. So if you can't praise him, girl, don't marry him. You gonna cuss him instead of praising him. Girl, why is he calling their husband mother efforts? Oh, God. Ooh, I, I, I can't imagine. Because I believe that the life is in my power, my talk. But then I was strategic in choosing my husband. I just didn't get with anybody. I got a man that I could praise. Do not marry a man you can't comfort. Okay? They need to be comforted. Sometimes it's not going to go the way they want it to go. Sometimes they just want to come lay on your chest. Okay? And be comforted. Sometimes they just want you to hold them and hug them. Number nine, number nine, and then I'm going to do one, one, another one, and then we're going to, that's going to be it until the book comes out. Pray. Pray and praise is similar. Hallelujah. What is prayer? Uh, as we in this little, little storefront, we don't know. Child, Pastor Ashley, pray for orphan. You're praying for uh, the, the car. <laughs> uh, prayer is is communion with God. Where we get it wrong is that prayer is not a monologue, mono one, it is a dialogue too. Prayer is talking to God about what he said to you. How many of you know, if you don't know what God said to you, you will not able to talk to him about what he said. This book in Christ I am, girl, you need it. Go on over to Amazon, pick it up because you need to know what God said about you and your husband and your kids and you need to talk to god about it okay god is said in jeremiah put me in remembrance of my word wait a minute remembrance does god he have amnesia did he forget god is omnipotent all oh, no he's omniscient okay he's omnipresent he's everywhere he's all wise he knows everything so why is he telling us to put him in remembrance of his word it's not that god forgot we forgot and he want us to talk to him about what he said so he said put me in remembrance of my word god i thank you that my husband is a man of god my husband loves you with his life my husband is faithful to you he is faithful to himself he is faithful to my me as his wife my husband is a good man he's a man of faith my husband is a praying husband my husband is a provider he provides well for me he comforts me in my children my husband is our protector i thank you jesus i thank you that he guides us he is our leader in the name of jesus i thank you that i submit to my husband i thank you that i respect my husband i thank you god that i honor my husband my husband lives a life that is pleasing in your sight my husband lives a life that is pleasing in my children's life my husband is a 
man of character and integrity. My husband is a man of wisdom. My husband speaks life and not death. My husband covers me with his word. My husband uh, gets up in the morning and he prays. My husband reads his Bible. My husband apply your word to his life. My husband is a good example for me. My husband is a good example for my children. I thank you, God, that you've blessed my husband with a long life, with a blessed life. My husband is healthy. My husband is whole in his mind, spirit, soul and body. My husband listens to me. My husband hears me. My husband honors me. My husband loves me. My husband adores me. Hallelujah. That's how you get up in the morning and you pray for your husband, babies. You pray for your children. You pray for your household. I want to make sure he go out there and work. Well, he ain't going out there now because it's COVID and takes care of us uh, and pay for everything we need. Uh, so the least I can do uh, is get up every morning and pray for him. Uh, throughout the day, I pray for him. Uh, throughout the day, I say, Lord, remember my husband. Uh, I call his name out to God. My first book, Praying for Our Children. Uh, I, I pray for my babies. Uh, I open up the word and I put their names in it. I'm going to do a reprint on it. This is how you pray for your husband, my girls. You speak well of him. You don't talk bad about your husband to your little girlfriends and your family. Mama, family, I love my daddy, but I know I got to be careful. Some things I say to him because he will get up and come over here and see about brother Michael. If I have a problem with my husband, I talk to the marriage counselor with it. Okay, because he can tell me what I need to do to fix it. Don't talk bad about you. You'll never hear me talk bad about my husband or about my kids. Why? Death and life is in the power of your tongue. You will have what you say, babies. So if you can't speak well about that man you are dating, if you can't pray for him and bless him and speak greatness in his life, if you don't want him to be a great man, a mighty man of valor, then don't marry him because you need to pray for him you need to bless him you need to speak well of him you need to honor him you need to admire him you need to say thank you i appreciate you i need you i honor you i respect you i am so thankful for you girls if you can't say that do not marry him all right, I'm going to be putting this in a book coming out very soon. Run on over to Amazon. Pick up this book about uh, We Are in Christ. Okay, and you can put your husband's name in it and your kid's name. My husband is prosperous. What that mean? If he's prosperous, then guess what? It's going to come down to me. My husband is rich and blessed. My husband is empowered. My husband is destined. My husband is heard from God, provided for. So you put your name and your husband's name. My book, 23 Ties, is available. Also, on sale, girl. It's coming off today. I'm coming live. Uh, so be sure to pick this up and the naked one. I love you, my loves. I have to go. I have to go. Have a good day. Mwah.